Okay, so in this video, we will cover measures of central tendency. The idea is we'll have a set of data, so numerical values, and we're going to ask in which way or which ways can we find sort of the center of our data set. And we will consider four such measures. So let's assume that we have a sample of n values, where n is obviously a positive integer. And suppose we order our n values from the smallest to the largest one. So x1 would be the smallest value, which would be less than x2, less than x3, less than and all the way up to our largest value, xn. So here's our first measure of central tendency, the sample mean, or also the sample average. And the sample mean, given a set of values denoted by x, we use an x bar. So this reads x bar, but it represents the sample mean. What the sample mean is, and this you should know, is the sum of all the values in your sample, x1 plus x2, all the way up to xn, divided by your sample size, therefore the number of values in your sample. And we can write this very concisely using sigma notation. So here's the symbol. This reads sigma. It's a Greek letter S that represents a summation. And so what we have on the numerator of our fraction is the sum of all the x values. And so instead of writing this out, we simply write sigma x, which means sum, add, all the x values in your sample. And of course, we must still divide by the number of values. And that is the sample mean. Let's consider an example. Suppose we had 1, 2, 2, 3, and 7. So we have our five values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So n here is 5. And so x bar is the sum of our values. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 10 plus 7, sorry. Just getting ahead of myself here. Over the number of values over 5. So if you add those up, you have 3 plus 7, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it is 15 divided by 5, which simplifies to 3. So the average of our sample here is 3. If you notice, 3 is also an element of our data set, and this is purely coincidental. If you change the set a little bit, changing, say, the 7 for an 8, so 1 plus 2, well, I should change the set first, so 1, 2, 2, 3, and 8, now we still have five data values, and if we find the sample mean of this set now, adding up all of our data, well, this is going to be 11, 13, 14, 15, 16 over 5. And if you divide 16 divided by 5, you get 3.2. And now you can see that 3.2 is no longer an element of your set. So the average value may not be an element of your list. If it is, it's purely coincidental. And that is a sample mean. Okay, now sometimes when you have a set of data, there may be outlier values. Values that are very, very small and that you can't explain, or that are very large and that you can't explain either. So sometimes you will end up rejecting a percentage of those smaller and larger values. And this will give us the so-called k% percent trimmed mean. This is our second measure of central tendency.
and the name gives it away, right? When you trim something, you take stuff away from it. You take you take stuff out. K here will be a positive integer, and when we say the k percent trimmed mean of a data set, we will remove the smallest k percent of values and the largest k percent of values. Let's do an example. Suppose we take 1, 2, 2, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, and 11. So here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 values. That is our sample size. And suppose we said we want to compute from this set not the mean, but say the 15% trimmed mean. Well, we have to remove the 15% smaller of values and larger of values. Well, 15% of 9 is what? If you do 15% times 9, so 0 0.15 times 9, you get exactly 1.35. Now, you have to remove a, an integer number of your data set, so you always round off to the nearest integer. So here, 1.35 is closer to 1, so we round up to 1. And so we would reject the smaller value, or the smallest value 1, and also the largest value 11. And we're left with a now smaller set of no longer 9 but 7 values, and the average of this remaining set will be the 15% trimmed mean of the original data set. If we compute this, well, 2 plus 2 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 9 plus 10 over 7. So 4, 9, 15, 22, 31, 41 over 7. And 41 divided by 7 is approximately 5.5. 857. And that is the 15% trimmed mean of the original data set. Now what if we went with a larger percentage? Let's go with a 20% trimmed mean. Then we do 20% of the original number of values, which is 9. So 0 0.2 times 9 will give you 1.8. And now 1.8 is closer to 2 than it is to 1, and so now we round up to 2. So we would remove the smallest two values, and the two largest values. So removing 1 and 2, 10 and 11, and now finding the average of this set will be the 20% trimmed mean. We now have 5 values, so we divide by 5. 7 plus 6, 13, plus 7, 20, over plus 9, 29, over 5. And if you divide 29 by 5, you get 5.8, which you can see is a little different from the 15% trimmed mean. And that is our second measure of central tendency, the so-called k percent trimmed mean. Now those two are really the most important ones. First, the sample mean, the average of your sample, and if there are some outlier values and you can justify dropping some of the smallest and largest values, then you can fall back on the k percent trimmed mean. The following two measures, which will be the last two measures of central tendency, are much simpler but not as important. So the first one of these remaining two is the median. And all the median is, is the middle value of your set, if you have n values where n is odd, and then is the average of the two middle values of your set if n is even. 
So again here we assume that we have n values in increasing order. And as I've said, and I'll be quite informal here, but then with two examples you'll see what I mean by this. The median after you've ordered your values is just the middle value. In the middle I'll put in quotation marks and you'll see why in a second. Now suppose that n is odd. That's the first possibility, right? Either n is odd or n is even. Let me give you an example. If n was odd, then let's say we have five, let's go with seven. So one, two, four, nine, twelve, eighteen, twenty-six. So this is our sample, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So n equals seven, n is odd, and the values are in increasing order from the smallest to the largest. Well here there is a middle value, right? And that middle value is nine. Three values, one value, three values, so here's the middle value, and this is our median, which is nine. Now what if here I take the same set, but I remove the 9, and I'm down to 6 values. Now n is even. And because we have 6 values, we no longer have a middle value per se. There are 3 values here, 3 values here, so there is no middle. Well, when this happens, when n is even, you take the two so-called middle values and their average will be the median. So here, 4 plus 12 over 2. Well, 4 plus 12 is 16 over 2 is 8. And now 8 equals the median of this data set. And that's it. So always remember, if you have an odd number of values, there is a middle one. After you increase them from the smallest to the largest value, that middle value is the median. If you have an even number of values, there is no single, but there are two middle values, and their average is the median. The last measure of central tendency is the mode. And all the mode is, is the value that occurs most often. In your set of values. And the mode may not exist if different values occur a same number of times. So let me give you a few examples of this. Suppose we had 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, and 15. Well, clearly, the value 3 occurs 3 times, which is the largest number of times that a value occurs. So here, the mode would equal 3. You could have 1, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 15, 15, 15, 15. Now, 3 occurs 3 times, 4 occurs 2 times, but 15 occurs 4 times. So here the mode equals 15, as 15 occurs the most often. But what if you had, say, this example now, 1, 2, 3, 3, 7, 9, 11, 11, 18. Every value occurs once except for 3 which occurs twice and 11 which also occurs twice. So here it's a tie between 3 and 11. In a case like this the mode does not exist. So 
so there can only be a mode if there is a value that occurs strictly more often than any other values. If there's a tie, there is no mode. And that's it. So when it comes to measures of central tendency, there are four key measures. The sample mean, the k percent trimmed mean, the median, and the mode. The most important one is the sample mean. And you may ask, when you want to describe a set of numerical data, is a measure of central tendency enough to capture the overall picture? And the answer is no. And we can see this very easily by considering two hypothetical histograms for a data set. Both histograms will have the same sample mean, but will look extremely different. Suppose that we have the given histogram. So as always along the x-axis we have our intervals for our x values. Along the y-axis is the frequency or the percentages. So how often do values fall inside of an interval? And let's do a second histogram. Suppose that both have the same positive sample mean. So the average value is the same in both cases. Well, suppose that the first histogram looks something like this. So you have the average value. And around the average value, you have the highest frequency, as you move further away from the left and from the right, the frequency gets smaller and smaller. So here's one first possibility. Here's a second possibility where, again, I really want to emphasize this. The mean is exactly the same in both cases. Just picture that this is perfectly symmetric about the mean, then you can see that in both cases the mean's the same, right? The center of our histogram is here, and the same for this one. So both sets of data, the first set and the second set, have the same sample mean but the histograms look extremely different. Right here, most values are near the average value, and in this case, most values are far away from the average value. So clearly, if you only have the sample mean and no other numerical measures of your data set, you may be missing a key part of the set of values, and that is, of course, the idea of variation. Here. There is very little variation, as most values are near the average value. Here, there is a very large variation, as most values are far away from the average value. And so this will be the topic of our next video, looking at measures of variation. And the most important one, we'll see again, four measures of variation, the most important one being the so-called sample standard deviation. And this measure will capture whether the histogram may look like this or more along those lines.